Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi everyone, welcome to Rufio. My name is Joe, if you haven't been on the channel before. Uh, you may not know my name already. This may be your first time here. If it is, welcome aboard. Uh, if it's not, you're a fucking loser. For some reason, you've subscribed to me or watched my videos before, and you've come back again. So I guess well done to you. Today, I wanted to discuss another one of my favorite decks. This is a small series I'm doing. Uh, two or three other decks, including Light Sworn and Dinos, uh, and maybe one or two others, who knows about decks and their viability in Master Rule 5, in particular with the new list in mind. So uh, I wanted a few points to discuss. I've got my trusty notebook here, which has all my information on it. So hopefully I don't forget anything that I wanted to talk about with you guys. Um, I'm also recording this at my place of work, which is why there's the weird background. Uh, got a casting couch here. That's how I got my job here. Doing some favors. And uh, yeah, I, I just thought I'd take advantage of the fact that everyone's out of the office on lockdown. Uh, I'm one of the few people that sort of uh, falls into one of those categories of work where working from home isn't ideal. I work with computers, but primarily hands-on with those, uh, setting up for businesses, that kind of thing. Anyway, I won't bore you with that shit, but basically I'm at work. There's very few other people in the office, so if you do hear any noises or anything like that, it's probably people just walking around. Uh, and hopefully no one barges into the staff room and thinks I'm some nutter who's talking to my own phone. But... Alas, I've wasted enough of your time. Let's talk about Burning Abyss. So as I said, I've got my notes here, so I'll discuss through these points with you and uh, I'd be actually keen to hear what you guys have to offer, what you think, uh, whether you think any of this would change or not. Uh, so in terms of Burning Abyss, let's discuss how they benefited from the new Master Rule. Well, we've obviously got an, a, a way to spam out multiple Dantes and that kind of thing because we've got more zones available. And the question is whether that's actually of any real benefit in the modern game that's for you to decide that that will be seen through our uh you know lines of play and that kind of thing and i'm not confident that going for just random multiple dantes will get us anywhere um i really wish that they'd given us more of beatrice uh maybe another copy or even another copy of like say graph uh seer would have been really nice but given that it enables all of those uh loops i doubt we're going to see that anytime soon um but I do think that, you know, we're, we're kind of in a slightly stronger place than we were before in terms of we're not as bound by links. Now, of course, we do have our own inbuilt link. We have Cherubini and uh, a variety of other links that we can use. Things like Curious and that kind of stuff that just mills stuff into Grave and puts us in an advantageous position. I do think, though, that given that we're not as locked down, that is quite nice because quite a lot of the time we were in a position where we'd be forced to link climb to go into our XCs to then progress our boards in that sense. Uh, and I feel that all of those other changes now to that master rule in that we can use all of these zones actually gives us a really strong position. Now the downside with all of this and the changes that have come up is that it almost feels like on the same token as we've been given something back, we've had much taken away. Um, so in terms of things that we hit on the list that affect us indirectly, but it does change how our deck building works. And of course it depends on which variant we're running. And we've seen our dangers go to one, uh, the two best level threes, which are a really, really good way of turbo now, getting into Dante, getting through our plays. Obviously, we focus on that link, uh, that level three kind of play. Uh, then they're down to one, understandably so, um, but it does definitely hurt how our deck building will work going forward. We've also seen Malicious go to two, which some people are still running that package. It is very strong when it goes off, but to see it at two, is it worth playing? There's probably better options now. Um, the Predator Plant engine is still technically viable for those of you who are running that, in particular the way Tom Rose was running it last format, I think it was, uh, where he was going into Insta Fusion and Super Poly, you can fetch him out the deck with the Predator Plants. That is still a viable way to do it. Uh, if you wanted to like window lock people and things like that, that is still a viable way to play. That is still a possibility. Um, even at one Insta Fusion. Um, it does mean though that if you open it, you know, you've kind of got a lot more bricks in your deck, but mm, that's up to you. If you're running Super Poly as well, I guess you've got another way to get into whatever fusions you would like to. Um, Tor Guide still being at two, it would have been nice to have seen this gone to three, because uh, obviously that would have benefited the deck. It would have been the best normal summon, it still is. Um, so to have seen that gone to three would have been perfect. It's still at two though, which is nice. Uh, it didn't do anything crazy. I, I don't feel it really is that 
insane card in the modern game. It's still very strong, but does it need to be at two? It could probably go back to three. And hopefully it will. We've also seen Destrudo hit, which, uh, you know, obviously are Yazi Mare Mare plays for people who are going down that route. Um, that's a bit of a shame, really. Um, in terms of the individual particular types of builds, things like PK Fire, uh, obviously there is some benefit from those who do run the Phantom Knight uh, Xyz and things like that. Uh, in terms of the block builds, we've seen Bulb go, which I know some were using because it's an Earth type. Uh, you can go into Giant Rex or uh, whatever else. You can make things like um, the Truria Beast going turn one, which now we've lost as easy access to. There are ways still to get into that. Uh, are they convoluted? Probably none of them will be as strong as if we had Bulb. And I do feel that that whole play with Needle Fiber would have been insane, although it would have been insane for every deck. So... To, to see it lost from us kind of takes it away from them too. Um, overall, though, I do think that the deck is in quite a strong position going into the new format, depending on how the deck gets played and how everything else evolves around it. Uh, it does give us a lot more freedom as well because you don't need to use as many extra deck slots for things like links. You can focus a bit more on your Xyz, Synchros, that kind of stuff, uh, which I feel the deck can benefit from having that extra utility in the extra deck because you can get so many monsters on board so easily we could benefit from being able to turn them into something quite powerful with a bit easier access. Not necessarily have to, to link climb to get there. Um, but it was just, yeah, more of a discussion I wanted to quickly have and, and sort of share my thoughts on how the Burning Abyss engine and stuff will work going forward. I'm going to be really, really interested to see how, what direction people take it in the new format. I do feel that people are still going to be primarily playing things like Block BA because it is quite explosive. Uh, although it's not my personal favourite variant, I understand why people are running it. Um, and yeah, I'd be really, really keen to see what you guys have to offer, what you guys are thinking of doing. If you have any ideas of where the deck may go, I'd love to hear it all down in the comments. If there's anything you think I've missed that's glaringly obvious, definitely tell me that as well. Uh, I don't have all the time in the world to think about these things. I just wanted to sort of get some ideas off my chest. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Uh, if this is your first time here, or maybe it's not, you should subscribe either way. We'd love to have you with us going forward. And like I said, there will be some more of these coming out. There's going to be a lot more discussion content given that we're all on lockdown and we can't play out our locals and that kind of thing. So most of this is theoretical anyway. Uh, thank you very much again for checking in. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I've put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.